Welcome everyone. Thanks for joining. And this is part three of my anti-aging series on how to slow and reverse aging naturally, even when you're over 40. And those of you who have missed part one and two, don't worry about it. I'll have the links at the very end of the video so you can click on and go watch those. And as I've mentioned before, to me, those are actually more important. You know, what you're putting in your body um, and what you are physically doing with your body is, in my opinion, the most important uh, aspects of anti-aging. This makeup that we're going to talk about today, this is the icing. And so there's some main tips that we're going to cover here in this um, video. Key points. Notice I'll bring it up as we're going along in the makeup video and the skincare, right? But the main points are this that we want to at when we're over 40 we want to keep things light keep things natural as possible we want to try to draw the eyes upward in what we're doing with our makeup and we want to you know keep things matte instead of shiny obviously if you want to do shiny you can um, but over 40 crowd is going to get the most benefit from matte makeup, not shiny, natural instead of, you know, and light instead of heavy and sharp, you know, and I'll show you some things that you can do with makeup to draw the eyes upward and create this optical illusion of things being lifted when maybe they aren't. So... We're gonna get into it, just bear in mind, I am not a makeup professional makeup artist. <laughs> um, I have my strong points and my weak points and I'll let you know in this video where those are um, so that if you wanna learn more from somebody who is expert level, you can. Also, not everything here is gonna be perfectly natural. I do try to get natural stuff when I can, but actual cosmetics that are all natural are extremely pricey and I just haven't gotten up to that level yet. I have experimented with some of them. Um, unfortunately, um, most of the natural items that I'm gonna be mentioning are uh, for skincare, actual cosmetics, not so much, because like I said, it's just been for me, uh, not in my price range to be able to afford that and if I have to choose um, Where I'm going to put more money on natural products is going to be on the foods that I put inside my body I talked about that in part one um, Also links as always are going to be in the blog that will be linked down below I'll pin it in the comments section. It'll be in the description box in case you want to uh, purchase any of the links. I'm not at all being sponsored by anyone here. Uh, but if you do buy from the links that I offer, then I will get a very, very small compensation for it, you know, but um, I appreciate it. You know, whatever I get, I appreciate. Um, but make no mistake, I'm not being endorsed by any of these people and I'm not getting paid a lot of money for it. I'm sharing with you the products that I actually use and love. Let's get into it. Okay, here I am, no makeup, <laughs> clean palette. Um, so yeah, y'all are y'all are pretty pretty fortunate. I never really show this face to anybody, but you know, makeup day. And so what you're seeing right now is a clean face, no makeup, and I'm going to. Spray my face down right now with um, toner and I love this toner because it has um, rose petals in it and sometimes I use uh, different brands that um, like this is a cheaper brand um, you can get it with hyaluronic acid in it um, of course links down below as I said before while that's soaking in that toner I'm going to explain to you what I use to wash my face with and it's this Carapex and I just started using this brand I really like it it's very gentle um, there's two types that you can get this is the renewal and I've used the botanical one before as well um, the difference is that the renewal that I'm holding here it 
it gently exfoliates so it's got a little bit of a you know texture to it um, to kind of get the dead skin off so this will be great during the winter time the other one that i've used the botanical blend it does not exfoliate it's just very gentle mild cleanser and what i really like is that these contain aloe or aloe vera juice cucumber really good stuff uh, chamomile Japanese green tea extract, shea butter, and vitamin E. If you get the botanical blend, it has aloe vera juice in it, also cucumber extract, green tea extract, coconut, and other things that are really good for anti-aging. Good stuff I recommend. You decide exfoliate or not. Might depend on you know what time of year it is, but with the toner that I follow up with, um, I gotta say also, usually my morning routine is like, this is in the shower. I usually keep this in the shower because I'm really bad about washing my face at night. I'll talk about that towards the end of the video, but so I usually keep this in my shower and I just wash it while, wash my face while I'm showering. A lot of people say, as we get older, make sure that you're not neglecting the neck and you're going even down into your chest, right? And I've also started working on my hands more as I've gotten older, but more about that in a moment. I wanna say for this, you know, this is, the hyaluronic acid is really gonna be good um, in terms of hydrating your skin and making it appear more plump. It's gonna fill in and puff up those fine lines to, um, help give a more useful appearance, but also hyaluronic acid is said to increase cell regeneration and tighten and smooth the skin. And so just as a side note, if you wanted to get more hyaluronic acid in your food, um, you could do that through eating, you know, artichokes, bone broth, grapefruit, leafy greens, lemons, oranges, sweet potatoes, and tomatoes. By the way, I talked about that in part one of this series, you know, on diet, anti-aging foods, antioxidants, and all of that. So yeah, now that the toner has dried on my face, I'm gonna move on to the next step. And um, I gotta say that I have been using this particular brand tree of life and you can get this trio here um, with the hyaluronic acid and the vitamin c and i would do this every morning with this brand and then at night um, in the trio you know this comes uh, the retinol a comes with it and i would do that at night all right but um, recently i ran out of this and i decided to replace it with one product that is just all in one and I'm really enjoying it. It's the vitamin C and the hyaluronic acid. So what I do with this is um, I put a double portion because I wanna put it on my hands for um, the age spots and get a little bit more. They, some say be careful with it. The vitamin C can, if you get too much of it, it can you know, maybe cause a reaction. But one thing that it does is it fades age spots. So that's why I'm putting on my hands because as we get older, right, you can see it right there. Um, they used to be worse though. <laughs> um, so I, you know, every day I put a bit of that vitamin C on there because it's going to um, fade the age spots and I saw like I have um, I don't know if you can see here I'm working on this this is a project of mine um, that I've been trying to work on removing um, for quite some time and the vitamin C helps a little bit but I'm going to tell you getting to the core of why that was there is helping even more which is you know getting the gluten out of my diet Believe it or not, this, this rash has been around since 2017. I couldn't figure out for the longest time what it was or how to make it go away. And none of the products seemed to work. I used all kinds of different masks and, and nothing seemed to work um, until I got off the gluten and the dairy and all the things that were causing these reactions in my skin to just like layer upon layer, just worse and worse and worse. And uh, once I cut that out, um, I stopped having these outbreaks and now what you see is just this underlying um, what I did find that's really effective is the skin mask and I've heard people have had extreme acne 
have done like seven days straight of this um, skin max mask and you it's it's all natural by the way the Indian healing clay is um, you know something that you make with um, apple cider vinegar and I usually recommend Bragg's is the brand to buy but if you can't then make sure you look for this on the label with the mother that's the good stuff that's the healthy stuff and I gotta say as a side note this mask even though it's highly effective after you use it your face is gonna be kinda red so I only do mine for 10 minute mask and immediately you will see blackheads come out you know and this that I'm telling you about started going down 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 and so I haven't been as aggressive with a mask as maybe I could have been um, maybe just like once a week I will do it or once every two weeks but as I do it like the bumps that were on my face they went down the redness decreased it's smoothing out and I really believe that as I continue to work on it it's going to continue to lessen also as I keep that gluten out of my diet um, I'll get my skin back the way I want but I'm going to show you um, a foundation that I'm using that gets rid of all that like if you've got this type of stuff going on my god this is going to work wonders it's um, Milani foundation and it is super effective oh I forgot to mention I also use this when I get out of the shower um, apricot oil which is great for decreasing wrinkles. I've been using this for a long time, it's a carrier oil. Um, and it, this one is my favorite because it comes with a pump and I use this for everything, my God. I will put this in my hair to get the frizz out and to smooth it out, like anti-frizz serum. I will use it on my hands, you know. But for years I've been using this um, on my face because the apricot kernel oil has been said to help with fine lines. You know, there are, other, there are other carrier oils that you can use that are really good, like jojoba oil. And for a long time, I used to use um, extra pure, unrefined uh, coconut oil, but I found out that that has a tendency to clog pores. So, um, you know, but, if in a pinch you could use that again in your hair and in your on your skin um, sweet almond oil is also another good one um, especially you know if you have dry to normal skin these are good alternative oils to look into but I think the apricot kernel is the best at smoothing out fine lines if you have sensitive skin and acne I have heard that grapeseed and argan oil are really good if you have more mature skin maybe look into avocado oil um, carrier oil that is or you know rose hip oil would also be helpful and there's so many uses for this like if you're like i don't need a big bottle yeah you because you can get cheaper with a smaller bottle but because i use it so much i love that this comes with a pump and that there's plenty here and oh you could use it as massage oil mm -hmm. oh yeah <laughs> A lot of uses for that stuff. Okay, so let's get on to actual makeup application now that we've, you know, got everything clean and moisturized. Okay, so not only are we starting with a clean face, we're starting with clean brushes. If I'm being a good girl, I will clean my brushes once a week, usually on the weekend. And, you know, maybe on a Sunday night, let them dry um, on a towel overnight and then you just start fresh Monday with clean um, and you know clean brushes and a clean face and obviously by keeping things clean that helps to not spread bacteria on your face that would give outbreaks that are bacteria related right so I'm gonna start with foundation and we're gonna see this red suddenly disappear and it's gonna be lovely right <laughs> and I'm gonna start with a foundation brush um, this is one of my favorite little tools as an over 40 woman um, I'm gonna start with the t-zone actually and right this this area here and then work my way out and I love this brush because it's gentle 
It doesn't tear at the skin like, say, a sponge, which we will use in a moment, all right? But it doesn't pull at your skin. And I think that as we get older, it's really important that you're not tugging at your skin and rubbing all aggressively into it, you know? The, especially around the eyes, that skin gets really delicate. And I'm noticing that more as I get older and I'm putting eyeliner on. I've even had to switch eyeliner to get into something softer and more gentler because um, my skin is pulling in a way that it didn't, it doesn't have the elasticity that it has. I don't know what that is. Um, I had a little outbreak, like a something on my eyelid that has been there for a while and I think it finally healed okay so another thing I like about this foundation brush is that it's going to get into the cracks and crevices and it's going to get into those pores and you know as we get older right it's almost like you got a spackle in there right I remember one time I was at this party with these ladies it was a Mary Kay party <laughs> and I was in my early 20s at the time and there were some over 40 women there and they were like asking the host <laughs> um where's that that product you know that product we really like and she's like I don't know what is it and she's like you know the spackle and I'm like the spackle what are you talking about and they're like, oh, yeah, that foundation, that cover-up is great. You know, you spackle in all those uh, pores and those cracks and those crevices. And I, at 20 years old, I had no clue. <laughs> now I know what they're talking about. I get it now. So, um, yeah, this kind of, you know, helps achieve that uh, getting into the cracks and crevices without maybe laying it on thick. Now, I do have to say this particular foundation is heavier than what um, maybe I would like. And I think when we're over 40, we, we have to be concerned about keeping things light. This is just one of the rules I've learned in uh, with over 40 makeup. Um, keep it light. The lighter, the better. Okay, the heavier the makeup, the more aged it can make you appear. When we're younger, we could get away with that stuff. So, um, to me, this has a heavier coverage than, say, this brand, which I might use on an everyday, but I'm out of it, you see. Uh, the Maybelline Dream BB Cream. Love this stuff. And it's got great coverage. It's got great coverage. And it comes up looking a little bit you know, lighter, but is it going to cover that that you saw as well? No, it's not. Um, I do think this one looks a little bit heavier, but again, your call, you know, each of you have different needs. So um, you might be like me and, you know, just use this on a day when you have a bad, you know, you really want to cover that up or you want to go out for the evening and you want something a little heavier um, and maybe just use this for everyday wear. All right, so now that we've gotten that foundation done, I am going to work on shading. And I am not a big person to be into this. Yeah, see if you believe me. All right, when I'm not big into shading, look. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm out of the light stuff. I have other things to do that now, but, and as you can see, this is like almost used up. Okay, so I'm starting with a damp um, sponge, okay? And so if you are gonna be working with a sponge, for the reasons that I mentioned earlier, you don't wanna pull your skin around, rather than smear, right? Which is something, again, I would have done in my 20s. Um, we're gonna tap, 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 tap. Now, I've heard a lot of people say do this in the, the number three where you start here and you bring it here and you do like that, like a number three, okay? For me, um, I have a very square face frame. You know, that's my shape, my face shape. Good thing to know, by the way. Everybody should know their face shape because then that helps you pick glasses and haircuts and stuff like that that really flatter you. 
um, if you know that. But anyway, also, I mean, just for me with makeup application, because of my face shape, I found that if I do that number three, which might work with somebody who has an oval sh face shape, you know, um, for me, I feel like it chisels my jawline out even more. It defines my jawline even more, and I'm trying not to. So for me, my main focus is right in here, and that would be the undermost part of the cheek line, okay? And so we're just tapping that in. I might do a little bit of, um, just a little bit of concealer under my eyes just to kind of give a bit of a lift and I'm going to work more with that as we go but that's just a preliminary um, lift under the eyes so it's not not so dark sorry if that lighting keeps adjusting on y'all and you're having trouble seeing me maybe if I would stop moving around the light would stop adjusting around me <laughs> note to self okay so I think on the concealer, you know, it's a good idea to go maybe a one shade slightly lighter than your foundation, <clears throat> but you don't want it too bright. And um, then, yeah, I'm going to go with the blush. And for me, it's kind of like a rose colored. And so I'm going a little bit higher than where I applied that foundation. Uh, not the foundation, I'm sorry, the shading. Okay, so now we're bringing some warmth to it. And I'm going to tell you, if I'm really busy and trying to get out the door, I'm not even going to bother with that, you know. Uh, I'm, I might put, I just will put the, this is all I'm going to really put on, okay. And maybe some basic um, eyeshadow, but I'm not going to do all this shading and bronzing and all of that. Now, now I use this um, fan brush and I'm going to lightly go up here. This is actually my daughter's. Um, I borrowed it from her. And um, what is that? Physician's Formula. I really like it, but... Um, she makes fun of me. She's like, you use that wrong. You use that wrong. You're supposed to use it with your hands, she says. And I said, yeah, but I mean, again, this is 20 versus 40 year old stuff. I don't want to be reflecting all kinds of light off my face. Because again, another over 40 tip is that if you have to choose between shiny and matte, you probably want to go with matte. Um, because all this shiny reflective type stuff is just going to if we've got a lot of cracks and crevices we don't want light reflecting off all kinds of stuff let's just put it like that okay um and honestly for me i think the more natural your face looks the better okay um that's me um, again to each his own i want to appear as though i look this way naturally or that I put very little makeup on, if any, okay? And just a side note, I think, you know, if you're single, you're interested in men. Um, they've done studies on men. What, what, kind of, what kind of look is a man attracted to? And they found that, you know, typically the average man, most men, are looking for a woman who has more of a natural look. The stuff that we're seeing in these makeup cosmetic ads, really flamboyant and pow, you know, like men are actually put off by that. It looks clownish to them. But again, you know, you do you, whatever works for you. Um, okay, so let's, I guess now we're gonna go uh, towards eyeshadow. And I'm gonna start out with a basic eyeshadow that's just, every day and then we're going to take it a little bit further like let's say if you wanted to go out at night so i'm starting with again like look this is so beat up but this color here as the foundation but i'm really like laying it out on the bottom and on the inside i know some of you are probably like on the inside right there yeah because that's going to open your eyes up more 
My daughters who are younger, you know, they put very shimmery type stuff and it looks really pretty on them. But again, like I said, over 40, um, trying to like not, not have so much shimmery, shiny stuff because I don't need light reflected off of things that I don't need light reflected off of. <laughs> okay. And so now I'm using this color. You see, I use these a lot. Okay. Um, just basic natural color. All right. And I'm using this angled brush and this long side is what I'm putting um, on the inside, you know, on that part of my lid. It's hitting my lid first, okay? So, and we do want to make sure that it's kind of A little wider right a little more thin on that side I'm gonna come back and fix that a little bit better in a minute um, this palette here I got on clearance at Target um, I'm a big like clearance shopper if I can be you know love to do the clearance shopping um, so again, back to the neutral colors, which are, you know, you can see I use it a lot because it's like my everyday wear. I'm going to go in for a darker brown. And I'm going to top it in. Top it in. Because again, we're getting to this place where it's like the skin is getting delicate and I don't want to... Move it around so much, okay? So we tap rather than smear. And now I'm gonna take this blender brush here and I'm just gonna try to blend it out a little bit so it looks more natural. And again, I think, you know, this is kind of a stylistic choice, but for me, I think the more blended it looks, the more natural it looks. Um, some people prefer sharp edges and lines, um, but to me it doesn't look very natural, okay? So if this was like an everyday look, you know, I would leave the um, leave my eyeshadow at this point and I'd get out the door on that note. Oh, look at that. I just made a mess. Okay. And I might even put this on and this is, um, so it's felt, I, I believe it's felt tip and... Um, it's just a dark brown and if I were doing you know every day just trying to get out the door you put this on really quick I do like this felt tip because again it's gentle on that skin and you don't have to pull and tug at it like say a pencil which i've had and i've gotten away from and even the super soft ones at my age are just getting unbearable they're pulling my skin and i don't like it so i've switched to the felt okay so that's just super simple but let's say we want to go for a more dramatic look um Let's say I'm going out or I'm going for a special occasion. Well, um, I'm going to do something more with this makeup. And I just realized I forgot to mention. <laughs> um, I usually tweeze before I do my makeup also. I just do one quick look over in the mirror to see if there's any stray little hairs. And I got this little pack. Um, I think I got it over at Burlington, but I'll put a link for something similar down below. But um, that's something I normally do is clean up my brows a bit before I get started um, with my makeup. Um, skipped that step, my bad. All right, so if we want to go for a more dramatic look with the eyeshadow, um, this would be like every day, but let's say I'm going out at night. Um, what I'm going to do is probably pull from a color that I'm wearing, and since I'm wearing olive green, I'm going to take, 
I'm going to take like a, um, this green, okay? I'm going to take a dark green. And I'm going to come down low. Actually, I decided I don't want that brush. That was too wide. This brush, okay? Um come down low and I'm going to go maybe one third, one third in. And I'm only going to go up to, you know, where my lid creases. Okay. So one third of the eye in from the outside inward. And now I'm going to um, kind of knock in the shadow off of that and I'm going to come in with this olive light olive um, green up here okay and again I'm just going to make it to about halfway point because I'm just lightening it up again bringing some blend going from a light a dark green to a light green and now I'm going to try this other brush again with, um, let's say, more of kind of almost a yellow to brighten it up. It's a complementary color just to brighten that up and smooth it out. And notice there is some shimmer here, even though I said, oh, try to stay away from the shimmer. I mean, you can do what you want, break whatever rules you want, you know, you can do a mix of matte and, and shiny, but, um, yeah, well, it looks, I'm going to see if I'm going to go again with my blender brush and just kind of blend it a bit. But I would say probably just, um, if you're going to use any uh, shimmery, I wouldn't make it all shimmery, right? Because you're going to look like a reflecting. <laughs> Again, my personal taste, do what you want to do. Um, and I'm going to go for more of a dramatic eye. And um, where is it? Here it is. This is a liquid eyeliner, and um, I'm going to tell you up front, I'm not the best with this. Um, it is definitely an art. It's going to take practice, um, and particularly in doing a winged eyeliner, I'm not your expert, okay? But I will tell you, basically what I do know is that we want to start with a basic line when you're doing that wing tip. What I like about the wing tip, even though I'm not dramatic with mine, because I don't want an Amy Winehouse wing. If you want Amy Winehouse wings, you go girl. It just ain't my thing, all right? Um, but start with one straight line. That's easy, we can all do that, right? And then what we do is we're going to come up with a line this way. Notice the line that I'm making is stopping right where my lid creases. I'm not going way up. I'm just going up to where that lid is going to crease right there. And see now I'm making it messy. But anyway, the idea is that then you come over you come over and you make it even. Let me see, maybe I can show you um, better on this eye. Again, um, this is probably one of my weakest points in makeup application. I'm fond of this this trendy look with the the you know winged eyeliner and even you know the let's see 
let me just say real quick do you notice it's up up like that to where the point where there would be a crease and then bring it over bring it straight over and I'm running out of this I'm running low on this I'm fond of it because you know what it does is it it draws the eyes up and notice I'm not doing any eyeliner eyeliner on the lower lid which is something we would do again in our 20s and a lot of 20 something 30 year old people people do that and it looks great on them but again if we're trying to create this optical illusion of a lifted face we want to pull the eyes upward upward and then for that reason you just want to focus on eyeliner on that upper lid so I think I pretty much have it you know is it makeup professional makeup artist perfect no but you know We'll get over it, right? Um, I'm going to um, try to clean this up a bit because as you can see, I got eyeshadow underneath. So let's clean that up. And again, another reason I just love this um, brush is that it's gentle, but it's very precise in getting around those delicate spaces. Might even try to just tap it out a little bit. Tap it out. Okay. And I'm going to work a bit on my eyebrows. Let me see if I need to tweeze anything real quick before we get going. Because I'm seeing some randomness here. And again, this is something that I should have done earlier, but... And I usually do this before I apply any makeup at all. Okay. And I want to tell you one thing I learned about getting your eyes done your eyebrows done, you know, shaping them really well is, um, and I had a lady, uh, a professional image consultant. I had the privilege of having 10 minutes with her once. And she said, you know what you need, you need to do is go get your eyes professionally shaped at, you know, one of those nail salons or hair salons or whatever. It's only like 10 bucks. And then you tip them a couple, at least I do, you know, maybe 12, 13 bucks. Um, to go in there for 15 minutes or less, and then they're gonna professionally shape your eyebrows. And then she says, all you gotta do is just maintain after that. Now, because I'm just not expert level at it, sometimes mine end up getting uneven somehow because they're very precise, it's a mathematics. And you can look it up online, you know, there's information online about how to measure it out exactly, you know, where to arch it and how to arch it and everything like that. Um, but again, if you're not confident and you want to start with a template, go to a professional, spare the you know 10 to 13 bucks uh, to get it done. And then all you gotta do is just follow after, you know, any hair growth that comes after, just maintain what they've done, basically. Um, all right, so I'm going to also now use an eyebrow pencil. And this is something that I just, recently started working with my daughters kind of influenced me on this um, I'm not trying to get anything really dramatic even though I have black um, eyebrows uh, my eyebrow pencil is a dark brown just to kind of add some dimension there and not make it so black on black you know and sharp I'm trying to kind of soften it out and give some dimension and And one thing I like is it has a spoolie built in to it. So that's another thing that kind of softens out. Like if it is starting to look a bit harsh, just kind of spoolie it out. And that's going to, right. So let me show you an example. If I put it in really kind of, it looks artificial there to me. Again, some people might like that. They like that sharp chiseled look. But for me, 
not so much a fan and I don't know why this is breaking on me I don't know if it's the heat of the summertime because it hasn't been doing that but I'm gonna go in and kind of fill that in a little bit more that's a, I have a trouble spot with hair growing right in that spot so again that's another issue I'm learning is for some reason you can have your eyes perfect but if you have an area where your your hair doesn't like to grow back or something then it looks like you don't have your eyebrows even when you really do see I'm seeing more stuff here this is the gift curse of having a um, mirror that you know magnifies ten times <laughs> okay so uh, I think we're done with that are we um, yeah and now I'm going to use some mascara and I mentioned earlier you know there's a lot of women right now who are using those falsies and um, I don't know I'm just not one to do it because it's just like really don't want to put glue on my eyes and keep up with this stuff and it looks heavy and um, my daughter just said she found some magnetic ones that were wonderful. They're not cheap, but uh, she loves them. And I thought, well, if I ever do that, I would like to try the magnetic ones. Um, let me know if you have tried them. If y'all tried them and you like them, you know, you have experience with those. Um, let me know. But again, it just, I think it goes back to you being clear on what look you're trying to achieve. If, if you... If you want to have more of a natural appearance, as do I, then I'm just going to go with the eyelashes I have. Plus, it keeps costs down, right? So, final step. Um, and first, you know, it's the lips. But I'm going to moisturize. And I'm using a product that my daughter has actually made. Um, this is a coffee blend um, lip balm and she's got a peppermint. I might put her site down below if y'all are interested. Usually actually I put that balm on before I do any of my makeup. It's like when I'm putting all the moisturizer on my face I put the balm on my mouth. Um, but anyway we're filming today so of course it's not going to be perfect right because there's a camera rolling. So it's the camera's here to catch all my mistakes <laughs> anyway all right so I am adding lipstick and it's not going on as boldly as it normally does because of that lip balm um, had I put it in earlier it would have soaked in more by now pro tip I want to tell you if you can get like a brush kit that comes with one of these lip brushes very lovely um, because um, you will get like six months more out of your tubes of lipstick. Like when this thing gets, you know, to the bottom, right, there's more beneath that point. It's down in there. And you can use this brush to get it. And I've done that. I love this brush. It's actually, to me, better results working with the brush. Uh, getting more precise. But um, that brush is going to save you money because you're going to get six more months worth of lipstick out of it if you can do that. And um, yeah, I think that we are done here. And uh, there's a lot more you can do with lips. Obviously, you can get lip pencil, lip liner pencils, and I've, I've heard people using those as a base and then putting their lipstick on, and that helps hold the lipstick on a little bit longer. But do what works for you. Now, tonight, when I take this makeup off, I am going to use face wipes because I'm terrible, terrible at... Um, you know, going to the sink and washing my face at night. I'm just really bad at it. That's why, you know, like I said, I keep this in my shower. It's in my morning routine when I shower. But at night, when it's time to take the makeup off, I can be very forgetful or I forget right as I'm falling asleep in bed. So what I've done, because I'm aware of my weaknesses here on this note, is that I started buying um, makeup wipes and I keep them 
right beside my bed in my um, my end table. And I've also got my Retinol A there and um, at night I might also use that apricot kernel oil again for eye makeup remover with a cotton ball and it takes all the heavy eye makeup off super easy and then it leaves your skin really soft. And then another thing is that I've just recently started using a silk pillowcase. Now they're not cheap. They are not cheap at all, but, um, and you don't want to, you don't want to go for cheap. Like if you're going to get one, get the highest mame that you can get, um, on the silk and I'll put links down below, but, um, the silk is going to help you with not drying your skin out. Um, it's, it's going to help you with, um, reducing wrinkles on your face and it's also going to help with your hair. It, you know, helps uh, to protect against hair breakage. So really um, bonus benefit to spare the expense or put it on your Christmas list or your birthday wish list or whatever to get a silk pillowcase. And remember, do those masks. Um, like I said, to me, I've purchased all kinds of different masks through the years. This is the only one I ever needed and um, pair it with this, which is super healing, apple cider vinegar. It's good to have this on hand anyway. I can go on and on and on about the benefits of just having this alone. But yeah, you mix it together according to the instructions and it is just the results are amazing. Um, once a week, once a month, um, and maybe do a sugar face scrub uh, during the winter time. That would be great. And like I said, um, this during the winter time as well, if you're looking for an ex exfoliating cleanser to get that dead dry skin off. And the other one that I mentioned, the botanical blend might be better for summertime, but um, you'll know what you need to prevent that dry flaky skin. I think if I were to do anything else to help with my face, um, cause obviously y'all saw me without makeup and you know, I've got, I've got issues. I've got these lines here and I've got, you know, pour, the enlarged pores in the T-zone. And then I've got that that I'm working on. I'm getting rid of that, you know? Um, but obviously things happen, right? I mean, they're sagging still, there's these wrinkles, um, and those up there are really bothering me, but this, okay, and this, there's face yoga and there's face aerobics. Did you know that? I'll put the links down below for that as well. But um, if I were to do more, I would. Um, a lot of people say just exercising your body alone is going to affect your face, and I agree that it does, and removing anti-inflammatory foods from your diet is going to reduce the puffiness and make you appear thinner. Um, I've been working on that as well, but if I were to like kick it up a few more notches, I would definitely do um, face aerobics or face yoga. That's something I'm probably going to be looking into more over the next year because I've seen some amazing uh, results with that. In closing, I just want to say, you know, yeah, aging is a battle. Um, and obviously, if you've been watching this far all through the series, then you know that, you know, in order to fight this battle well, you have to fight it consistently and strategically. You have to apply effort daily, weekly, monthly, and in that way, you delay aging as much as possible. Um, obviously, it's going to happen, right? It is going to happen. I'm not going to look like I'm 18 at 60 years old. And anybody who tries to do that is maybe getting plastic surgery and it just doesn't look natural, okay? So I think if you're trying to go for uh, graceful aging, which is what I'm trying to really promote with these videos, um, then you, you got to apply consistent effort and it's, it's a lot of effort, a lot of strategic effort. Um, hopefully everything I've shared with you in these videos is going to help you to do just that. And like I said, you know, if you miss those two other segments, 
links will be down below. Don't miss out because in my opinion, we were just talking about the icing. You know, makeup is the icing, but you know, when you get your diet in order and your physical fitness in order, um, then it really makes it easier to make that icing look, you know what I'm saying? So thank you for joining me this far. And um, if you want to watch the other two videos, you can click on these links right here and maybe I'll put one over there. Yeah, two links. And um, thanks for watching and I'm wishing you guys all the best as always. Be blessed.